Being in a large uh, store or in a mall, we have uh, all heard the calls on the intercom every now and then because a child lost its parents. And maybe you've experienced it yourself, either as a child or as a parent. It's a shocking experience, both for the parent and the child. And it happens unintentionally, usually because the child is distracted by something that it sees and then it wanders off. And at some point it will realize that um, the parent is no longer around or the parents are no longer around. And then panic, panic strikes and it will begin to cry. Uh, the same thing can happen on a spiritual level. Two things are at play here. Distraction and the wandering off. However, the consequence is devastating. And uh, the consequence actually is separation. The child is separated from the parents. And Solomon gives us a stark warning about this in Proverbs 21 verse 16. He writes there, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. This is um, very stark. He uses the word wanders which implies it's not intentionally, it's actually, it sounds very innocent, you just wander off. Um, but the result is death. He says the one that does that, that is in the congregation of the dead. Paul uses the same picture to describe sin that is without deliberate intention. In Hebrews 2, verse 1 through 3, he writes there, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape, if we neglect so a great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The cause here is negligence, he says, if we neglect so great salvation. And the result is that, uh, that we let them slip, it says here, or drift away. It's this same word again, drifting away. Uh, and he uses it a few times. Uh, it's a gradual process. And um, the word that he uses here for slipping away or drifting away is what is normally being used for a boat that gets loose and then uh, is taken by the current and just drifts away. It doesn't go fast, but it goes. And um, that is what happens if we neglect our salvation. We get caught in the current and we drift away. And the end result is death. In Hebrews 6 verse 19, the same picture is used when it speaks of an anchor. Uh, to the soul. Uh, we need to be firmly anchored. And so to circle back to the first example of the child, uh, it should never let go of the firm grip of the hand of the father or mother. Uh, spiritually this means that we have to be uh, consciously living a purposely directed life. We spiritually let not go of the hand of God. If we don't do this then and we neglect, then the first results will soon appear. And Paul writes about that as well to the Hebrews, in Hebrews 5, verse 11 through 14. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk is unskillful in the word of right, uh, righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What happens is the result of this drifting away is that one will become dull of hearing and then rapidly moves toward unconversion. Neglect is dangerous. It leads to death. Uh, in 2 Timothy 2 verse 4 it says, No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. 
that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. I used this verse a couple of times uh, recently, uh, but Paul makes here the comparison to a soldier. Uh, we are at war, and a soldier cannot allow himself to be distracted. If he does, he runs the risk of being killed. Is that serious? <clears throat> so Paul writes to the Hebrews in chapter 5, uh, that they were so seriously drifting away that they had to relearn the basic principles of the oracles of God. Their faith was crumbling and falling apart. <clears throat> and we know from Romans that faith comes by hearing. And so uh, if drifting away causes uh, dullness of hearing, then the picture is complete. And um, we see that it is, uh, it is destructive. Solomon uh, once more paints it in black and white in Proverbs 8, and verse 32 through 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The instruction is clear. Just notice all the verbs. Eh? Listen, hear, watch, wait. I always say this. Notice the verbs, because there you can see what, what you need to do. And the repercussions for not doing so, for being dull of hear hearing, for drifting away, are also clear. Death. In fact, those who do so love death rather than life, whether they realize it or not. Very strong language Solomon uses. First we read that those that wander away, they are uh, in the congregation of the dead. And here they say, those that do so, they, uh, they love death. But I also said, it, it happens not intentionally. The child that gets distracted uh, is not intentionally walking away from, from, uh, from the parent. That is not what the child wants to do, but it's distracted. And... <clears throat> Jesus warns also um, against this, this drifting away, this wandering off. Um, in uh, Revelation 3, verses uh, 16 and 17, there it says, So because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Now this is to the church of uh, Laodicea, and um, we have to note that the Laodicean church is a type of the today's church, uh, the church of the last days. And their drifting away um, happens suddenly. Uh, they are not even aware of their spiritual decline. And the Laodicean judges himself wrongly. <clears throat> he does not see the poor quality of his own spiritual life. And he spends his time with all the wrong things. And this shows um, typically, typically human nature. It's deceptive when it comes to self-judgment. Um, man usually doesn't think uh, of himself as a lover of death. Um, he's rather enjoying life. Uh, he enjoys it so much that he thinks he is fine. He actually distracts himself. He assumes that he is fine regardless of the readily available knowledge of the word, telling him that it's not so. He's careless and in great sin. And Jesus is very clear about this. He says, I vomit you out. Very hard words again. But that makes it at least clear. And if, if we go to Leviticus chapter 4, then you see that this whole chapter is about so-called unintentional sins or um, sins uh, committed in ignorance, it says there. Well, that, that's what it means, unintentional sins. 
And that is what drifting away is about. Again, the child did not intend to walk away from its parents, but it was distracted. Unintentional means without intention, something you didn't mean to happen, but it happened nonetheless. And it also shows that the sinner's feelings about his actions do not change the actions or their outcome. Uh, Leviticus 4 calls these unintentional sins still sins. And um, the wages of sin is death. Just imagine a, a criminal um, that, that committed a heavy crime in court saying to the judge, but I didn't mean it to happen. And I also did many good things. Uh, the judge won't let him get away with that. He committed the crime and he will pay for it. How many traffic accidents have happened because someone was driving and at the same time distracted by uh, his, uh, his smartphone? How many injuries and deaths have been caused this way? They were unintentional, but still they are very serious. They are caused by carelessness, by negligence, by ignoring a higher priority. And likewise, many sins are committed because of ignoring God and His law. In reality, sins, these sins are committed willingly. We have been adopted into God's family. We bear His family name. We are called Christians or we call ourselves Christians. So, when we commit sins because we ignore God, we do use his name in vain. We do not live up to the name that we bear. And God tells us not only not to do that, he says also that those who will do that, he will not leave them unpunished. In Exodus 20 verse 7 it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. He will not leave them guiltless. Willingly committed sins, the so-called unintentional sins, they do smear his holy name. And he cannot just let that go. Why? Because God is just. And when I say God is just, that should not be taken lightly. Justice requires a moral standard. And in this case, it is God himself and his law. And the just or the righteous person um, does not deviate from that standard. But the sinner, intentional or not, he does. he does. He deviates or even ignores the standard set by God. And he is judged accordingly. Judgment follows. God is very serious about this. We can read this also in Psalm 11, verses 4 through 7. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try, the children of man. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. It may often seem that God is not paying attention, that he is not involved with his world. But as we read here, he is very aware and he is patiently timing his intervention. I would say long-suffering. But when it comes, it comes suddenly. And when it comes, we often feel that it's unfair. But it is fair. It is just. He set the standard. He is warning us. As we, while we are drifting away, he's calling us back. He's saying, you're drifting towards death. Repent, return. And he's often uh, long-suffering. Long-suffering. So that we have time to repent. Not to give us a license to continue. As many may perceive it. But so that we have time to repent. Psalm 89 verse 14 says, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Justice and judgment are part of God's nature. 
we should not expect anything else from a perfect God. But he's not some terrible God lay, uh, lying in wait uh, until we make a mistake so he can strike. No, it says here also in the same sentence, mercy and truth go before him. And that points directly to Jesus, the truth. When we have accepted Jesus in our hearts, then God can see us righteous. He can see us dressed in white robes. When we repent, his salvation, which is the salvation of God, Yahshua, his salvation will be near to us. And that's what it says in Psalm 85, verse 9. Beautiful psalm. It says that surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. His salvation, Yeshua. Then the mercy and truth that go before God will bring us righteousness and peace. And that's what it continues to say there in Psalm 85. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yet the Lord shall give that which is good. We are not lovers of death. We do not belong to the congregation of the dead. We cannot allow ourselves to drift away. We cannot allow ourselves to wander off. Whenever we find ourselves on that path, we must repent immediately. Repent, remember, it means return. Turn around, go back. Because otherwise, we are on a path to death. Embrace life. God's salvation, Yeshua. And live. Amen. Thank you.